My plan for today was to make a few more of these beautiful heart-shaped trinket dishes. I'm running low on pink and red murini, and I have a few heart-shaped murini, but not enough. So I placed an order with Tabitha's Glass Emporium the end of January for the pieces I needed, assuming they would get here well before I needed them mid-February. And sure enough, she shipped them out right away. Since then, they have taken quite an adventure. They went from Croatia to New York City. Then they shipped them out to Queens. Then they went up to Springfield, Mass. And now they're in St. Louis, Missouri. Why? I have no idea because I live in Connecticut. But anyway, that is not going to happen. I don't think I'm going to get them in time. So plan B is to go back to these freeze and fuse hearts that I did last year, I guess. And I have these great molds, the plain hearts, and then these, which are actually chocolate molds. I'm gonna do them a little differently. I don't like that I filled in the center. So I think I'm just gonna fill in the outer part, which is the lowest parts of this mold. So that's up for today. Freeze and fuse hearts to make some more trinket dishes. So the powders I'm gonna use today are red opal powder, deep red opal and red transparent. I'm also gonna do petal pink opal and pink opal. While I'm at it, I'm gonna make some more shamrocks for this trinket dish to have them done right before St. Patrick's Day. And that's gonna be emerald transparent, jade opal, Kelly transparent, and emerald green transparent. The way I do it now, instead of adding a little bit of water, a little bit of water, a little bit of water, I just put a few spoons and I'm using these little cool, they're um, collector spoons that I found at the thrift shop for a buck a piece. So I like two or three spoons of that powder and then I just put it in, stir it around, make sure it's really good and saturated and there's no dry pockets in the bottom. And then I just pour off the extra water. And I find that just by pouring off the extra water, it gives you the perfect slurry texture for freezing foods. Much quicker, much easier, much less bother. So just stir it around really well. Let it sit until the water resettles. Pardon. Let it sit until the glass resettles at the bottom. Pour off the water and you're ready to go. These are much easier to do. So I filled those first, tapped the water out. These are ready for the freezer. I did not fill them all the way up. The mold is very thick. And for what I'm doing, I don't want that thick of a piece of glass. So these are gonna be a little trickier to unmold when they come out of the freezer, but they'll work better for the project. Get those last little bits of running water out and off they go to the freezer. Okay, these are ready for the freezer. I switched to the other tray because little bits had gotten in and that will show up. I tried last year to do everything two-tone. It really, I wasn't that thrilled with the look. So these are all just a single color. And we'll see how it goes. Came out of the freezer just fine. Some did not. So I will throw another batch in the freezer and then get this ready to fire. The fuse components are in the kiln. Here they are out of the kiln. I'm glad I made extra because I have some cracks in some of these. I like them much better when they're like this with the uh, empty center than when I did these. 
but these were much easier to do because they were more solid. So I got a couple or that are perfect. And a couple where they have little breaks in them. And then a couple where pieces broke out. And any of these where pieces broke out, I'll just smash them down and turn them into frit. So the glass won't be wasted. I know you should follow the six millimeter rule, but I think the dishes are too clunky. I love when they're more delicate. I suppose that'll also make them more breakable, but I just like it better that way. So these are all gonna be single layer. I'm going to start with the Valentine's Day, even though I really feel like dealing with St. Patrick's Day first. So I'm going to keep them fairly simple. I would probably start with the solid hearts and the Murini roses. So I have to dig those out and then I will be back. So I'm going to put in another simple one, just open heart in the center, and then I'm going to go with red borders. And I think I will cross them at the corners so they go off the edge. So I just need to cut these and get this one ready to be tacked together. And then a viewer had the greatest idea. What if I took the Marini heart and squashed it flat, then I wouldn't have the bumpy texture in the center of the dish. So that's up for today. Finish these two to get them ready to be tacked and then do a couple more Marini hearts that I'm going to squash. And then as soon as the Paragon kiln is done, the Gen Ken kiln is loaded and ready to tack these pieces together. Oh, I put clear powder over these two in the gen can, and that didn't work at all. I discovered the problem was when the, with the firing temps. I just put the uh, gen can on a preset tack fuse, and it doesn't get anywhere near as hot. This one gets up to 1,000, this one's 1,250. Um, the top here is 1,250. My Paragon is 1390. So I just need to reset the Gen Ken to the higher temps of the Paragon and then refire. Okay, let's take a look. See, much better. It just wasn't firing hot enough. Here are the Freeze and Fuse Valentine dishes ready to be slumped and in the kiln. And then one of the St. Patrick's Day is also going in. Very nice. I really like that little square mold. I'm glad I bought a second one. A little preview for St. Patrick's Day. Not my favorite, but turned out cute. The last one for Valentine's Day this year, I'll be using the squashed heart, but I'll put that on a separate video.